Good morning, y'all. It's good to be here. Yes, indeed. You get the opportunity to celebrate some people getting baptized later on. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Come on, when you get a, when you get a new car, it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful when you get a new house, get a new pair of shoes. But man, what about new life? New life is. Beautiful. For any man in Christ, he is a new creature. I just pray that we remember that in all of our time. Sometimes the challenge to, 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 to maintain the integrity in those quiet times. Uh, when, when nobody knows, nobody's going to find out that you cussed your husband out or your wife out yesterday. Uh, nobody's gonna find out that maybe you was a little bit uh, uh, did a little too much when you was punishing your kid it's all these are all small things that we have to allow the Lord to convict us of and be grateful of the conviction the Bible says the Lord chastens those that he loves he wouldn't be a good father if he let us just run rampant so embrace those things that challenge us to be better and closer to him there's no lose there that well the only loss is the weights but you want to lose the weights right we want to the bible tells us to lay aside every weight that so easily besets us so maintain your integrity maintain your consistency on who you are here on a sunday sure but also on a random thursday night when nobody knows right when you're shuffling through your phone when you're going through your computer that nobody can uh can can well we know that the lord is always there right if nobody no person sneaks up on us know that the lord is there so be consistent for the sake of the Lord, amen? God is good. God is great. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Just take like five seconds and just thank the Lord real quick for who he is. His grace, his mercy, his kindness, his tender mercies. Hallelujah. We thank you. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. I pray that Sundays aren't the only days that we commune with you, man. We, sometimes it's a habit uh, that's, that's, that's more challenging to break than others sometimes. Just the complacency of, you know, when you're so consistent, sometimes we can forget that you actually are doing things. You actually want to sup with us individually. Word says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. May we be reminded to let you in. May we be reminded that you didn't just save us for us to return back to our sins. It's, it's certain things you did in the Bible where you said, hey, now go and sin no more. You see somebody drowning, you don't save them for them to go back in the deep end. You can't swim out there. Stay on the shore this time. There's no sin that man has defeated. We've lost to sin every time. You conquered death you conquered sin but if we take on sin on our own we lose every time help us to be reminded to take it take you with us the word says that if we walk in your spirit that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh father we're conquerors in you we're more than conquerors in you we have victory For those that have made the decision to follow you, Father God, encourage them. Your word talks about endurance in many different passages. It tells us not to be weary in well-doing, for we'll reap in due season if we faint not. We pray that this passion, this joy, this fervor that they have at this beginning, Father, that it'll last. Father, that it'll be renewed. That it'll be, that fire will be rekindled on a regular basis. And it won't burn out. Father, for the word that you have for us this morning, make our hearts ready. Make our hearts ready. If there's anything that distracts us from hearing and or from you, from you from hearing us this morning, we pray one for forgiveness. Father, to give us the grace not to go back to that thing. Maybe come here and, and be ready in this moment with freedom and with, with, with nothing holding us down and nothing holding us back so we can give you the praise that you deserve. It's to present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you. It's our reasonable service. 
Father, we love you. But your word says that if we love you, that we should keep your commandments. So as we praise, remind us even on a Monday after we leave here, even on a Sunday evening, to keep your commandments. We love you. We thank you. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. All right, listen, repeat after me. Say, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Come on, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on now, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. Come on, any man in Christ, he's a new creature. Are there any new creatures in here this morning? Oh, we got a couple. I said, are there any new creatures in here this morning? Hey, hey, hey. Here we go. Uh, say brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Any man, sir. Any man in Christ is brand new. Yes. All things have passed Forgetting. Forgetting yesterday. Hey. Can we sing that again? Hey, say brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Yes. Any man in Christ. Any man in Christ is brand new. Yes, all things have all things have passed Forgetting yesterday. Forgetting yesterday. Yes.
living life, say. Living life, living life, living life is glory. Living life, living life is glory. Sing it again. Living life, say. Hey.
trust you. Trust you evermore. Hallelujah. Say bless you always. Curse you never. to get in place. Minister Rice and uh, Minister West are going to be doing the baptizing. To all our visitors that have come to witness this day, thank you so much for coming. They need your support. They need your prayers. They need your encouragement. This is the kind of day that the devil hates. Amen. While they're preparing, just a couple of announcements. Women's Day Choir Rehearsal. Uh, this coming Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. Praise God. The women, they had good participation this past Thursday. We're looking forward to happen again. Amen. Yep. Women's Day, I believe it's the fourth Sunday of this month. Third Sunday? Okay, the third Sunday of this month. Bless the Lord. You have the list of people at this point? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, since we have so many women, they requested that we do all the men first. And then uh, once the men vacate on this side, the women will be addressed over here. Then we can have women on this side and that side. 
uh, to change out of their, their wet clothes. Amen. Who are we going to start with first? Bryson Hanford Bryson. is our first candidate. Bryson Hanford. Now to our visitors, if you want to come up when your candidate is called, you can come up, get close, take video, take pictures. Amen. Everyone else must remain in their seats. All right, so send some representatives from the family to come up, video, and take pictures because this is the day you want to remember, all right? Okay. Come on, Bryson. Young Bryson, in obedience to the great head of the church and upon your professional faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you today, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Who do we have next? Bishop, our next candidate for baptism is London Taylor. London Taylor. All right, Brother London. This is Bryson's big brother. London is a faithful young man. Begun to work in the media department this year in obedience to the great head of the church Jesus Christ today we baptize you my brother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name Who's next? Bishop, our next candidate for baptism is Marzarion Dick Derrickson. Marzarion Derrickson. Marzanion. Marzarion. Did I say that right? Marzarion. Marzavion. My apologies. Say that again. Marzavion. Marzavion Derrickson. Marzavion. He jumped in the pool. He jumped in. All right. <laughs> Should have put a diving board on the end of them. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, little brother, <laughs> we baptize, well, you know already baptized yourself. We, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. for baptism today is Charles Martin. Charles Martin. All right, Brother Charles. There we go. Come on. Bless the Lord. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, my little brother, Today we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
the little ones listen to y'all once they come out of the room you can go back and help your child get dried off and dressed if you want amen now is that the last mail yes sir. okay that's the last mail once the mails get cleared back there then we're going to use both sides all right once the mails get cleared out from this side okay who's the first sister we have nylea chapman all right sister chapman Amen. Where's Reggie? Man, you better get up here. Oh, was, was you getting your phone together? Okay, I knew you had to come up here. Yeah, amen. We got to get Reggie to play that bass guitar he know how to play. in obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ today my little sister we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Amen Amen Hallelujah Bless his name Bless his name children getting baptized today which is a sign of godly parents raising their children up in the admonition of the Lord so we praise God for the parents who's next we have the little sister Soraya Chapman all right sister Chapman So look, y'all lift her up so, so everybody can see her. Lift her up where everybody can see her. Stand this side, lift her up. Because she came in there. No, didn't nobody see nobody come down. Suffer the little children to come home to me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We got to come like little children, unafraid, unashamed, and ready to jump into the water. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ today we baptize you my little sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name Amen Amen his holy name who do we have next bishop the next candidate for baptism is marzavion derrickson marzavion marzavion derrickson all right marzion oh my help me marziah You got it spelled right? Okay. Marzava. Okay. Okay, what happened to names like Judy and Brenda, Lisa? Amen. Special names for special people. Unique names for unique people. In obedience to the great hand of the Okay, is somebody else coming up? I see your point. Who's coming up? Okay, see, Grandma. Grandma can come up if she wants to. Grandma, where you at? She's at the door. Did you want to come up? Come on, come on.
in obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Today, we baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Their wedding is Saturday, April 27th, 2 o'clock p.m. here at Bread of Life East. They're registered at Macy's and Amazon. Amen. That's Javian up on the drums. Amen. Where's Sister Star at? Where's his fiance? There she is over there. Bless the Lord. I know he looked young, but he's older than what he looked. I don't know why I said that dude's 13 years old. Now that's a grown man, y'all. He's just blessed with youth and gifted with great anointing and musical skills. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to have him part of Bread of Life East. He's new, but he's already a great blessing. Plays a few instruments, writes songs. Amen. And serious about the Lord. Serious about the Lord. Both of them are serious about the Lord. We're going to have to get them to smile a little bit more. <laughs> there you go. Who do we have next? Bishop, our next candidate for baptism is Shannon Hart. First name again? Shannon. Shannon Hart. All right. Sister Shannon. We got family, friends coming on up. Y'all come on up. Get your cameras ready. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Y'all look like good church folk. Amen. What church y'all go to? Mount Zion. Reverend Back. Oh, I know Reverend Back. Amen. Over oh, Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, y'all come a long way. Amen. Bless the Lord. There we go. Amen. This is a great day. Today, in obedience to the great head of our church, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, today we baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. side yet is that clear yet okay try to try to get them to wrap it up as quick as possible so we can start sending some of the sisters over that way bless the lord who do we have next bishop our next candidate for baptism is taryn hart all right, God bless you. Come on down, Sister Hart. Thank God for water heaters. They didn't have water heaters when I was growing up. Had that song, Stepped in the Water. The water was cold. Chilled my body but not my soul I think my soul was chilled too that day <laughs> in obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ 
today we baptize you my sister in the name of the father another son another holy ghost in jesus name amen amen hallelujah Folk came to the altar. Even after the altar call was, was over, folks went in the back and still wanted to give their life to the Lord, become part of the ministry, and so on and so forth. So it was just a great day on last week. Amen. Who do we have next? Bishop, our next candidate for baptism is Alphelia Johnson. All right, Sister Johnson. Sister Johnson here. You don't see anybody? Okay. Who's next? Bishop, our next candidate for baptism is Alexis Grant. All right, Sister Grant. <laughs> make sure, make sure they can hear the names back there. All right. All right. Oh, no, you didn't walk up in here. I didn't see your face out there, man. Bless our host. Praise God. That's my Macedonia family right there, y'all. Members of my dad's church, Sister Brown, still there. Amen. All right. I ain't seen this guy a long time. Amen. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, today, my sister, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop, our candidate for baptism tism, is Jennifer Torres. Jennifer, Jennifer Torres. Torres. Sister Torres, come on down. Any family members or friends? Here we go. All right. Thank y'all so much for coming. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's a whole lot of love right there. It's a blessed day, blessed day. Everybody got a position? Today, in obedience to the great head of our church, Jesus Christ, and upon the, your profession of faith in Jesus, today we baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen and amen. So we can start taking the next candidates to get dressed over here. If we can just get one sister to kind of monitor. Over here. Okay. So if they have a towel or anything that's back there, we need to bring it over here. Because this room's empty now. Is 
How many left? Yeah, still. I'm pretty sure they got people waiting in the in the hallway trying to get in. Really? They quit they changing that quick. Okay. Now who's next? Sister Sister Antoine? Our next candidate for baptism, Bishop, is Asia Blakey. Amen, Asia Blakey. Y'all got a good position. All right. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ today we baptize you my sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name Amen Amen Before we got left. Washington. What's the first name again? Elena. Elena. Elena Washington. All right. Elena. Bless the Lord. Oh, here come more family. Praise God. A lot of love in the house tonight. I mean, today. Bless the Lord. In obedience to the great head of the church, Jesus Christ, and upon the profession of your faith in him, today we baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 out because there's another one that's supposed to be coming and that is Hannah Mathis all right sister Mathis y'all know Sarah this is their mom and dad mom and dad yes. crystal and, and rob bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord i, I know rob i know i know brother i know in obedience to the great head of the church and upon your profession of faith in jesus christ Today, we baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. one 
one more candidate to just just pull the end they're walking in but she needs to get dressed amen bless the Lord We can get into the word while she's getting dressed. So can y'all stay in the pool? Come on real quick, everyone stand on your feet. Just for the sake of time. Come on, with your Bible in your hand, say it like you mean it, Heavenly Father. This is your word that you gave. This is your word that I received. This is your word I will obey. For this is your word that I believe now if you believe it say amen. amen praise God you may be seated in the presence of the Holy Spirit we're in the book of Colossians the third chapter praise God we're going to do the second half of it we tried to do it last week but the Holy Spirit was moving I had to say what the Lord put in my mouth and as a result you see the baptisms and the salvation that took place Amen. We got to get back to the point where preachers are listening to the Holy Spirit and flowing with him in the name of Jesus. No long, no, nothing wrong with setting up your sermon. Never, nothing wrong with getting your notes. But when God wants to speak expressly, you need to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You cannot have a flat nose. You must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we try to do that. That's why you don't see programs because God sets the program. We have an order of service, but sometimes there's spontaneous praise and a spontaneous word. Amen. She's ready? Okay. Come on. Our, What's the name again? Our final candidate for baptism is Lanaya Nolan. All right. Bless the Lord. There you are. Praise God. Right on time. In obedience to the great head of the church and upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ. Anybody else coming? Today, we baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Won't you hang on to these? Where's this Antoine? Okay, because she gave me all the baptismal certificates. Here she comes. We'll give this out after the word if you don't mind. Bless the Lord. Again, we're in Colossians. Say what? Somebody left their socks? <laughs> okay. P put them back there. Make sure the, 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 the water is off. Is the water down? Is it down? Okay. All right. Don't unplug it yet because it'll start making that sucking sound while I'm preaching so so pull it after church okay let's go to Colossians chapter 3 verse 18 the previous chapters deal with dealt with Christian conduct probably need to turn this on you know I preach with every parts of my body Test one, two, okay, here we go. The previous chapters dealt, dealt with Christian conduct, you know, amongst the brethren and in the household of faith. Now the, the rest of the chapters deal with conduct within the home and the latter part even on the job. Let's deal with Christian conduct in the home, all right? Look what it says. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. It's proper in the Lord to submit to your own husbands. Now, the world has dirtied up the word submission and it tries to make you feel like you're subservient that you're less than no you're equal to but you hold a different position as a wife there cannot be two heads in any organization we have a president we have a vice president you have managers you have supervisors you have a husband 
and you have a wife. Amen? Now, you need to understand that submission is for the sake of order. If there is no submission, there is no order in the household of God. And the Bible says you submit to your own husbands because it's fit in the Lord. It's proper in the Lord. It's the right thing to do, the best thing to do, a good thing to do. Amen? Submission is a good thing. It's a powerful thing. And it should be an aggressive thing. All right? Means aggressive means that you must initiate it. The woman must initiate it. The man cannot make you submit. You're a creature of free will. Amen? Again, you are equal to him, but in a different position. That means that both her husband and the wife are necessary in the family. Amen? But they hold different positions. It's the same on your job. That's why supervisors should treat their employees well. Why? Because we have no employees who are going to get the work done. If there's no supervisor, who's going to maintain the order? So both are necessary. Hold different positions, but they're necessary. Now, don't ever marry a person that you can't submit to. Amen? But once you get married, you got to submit. It's required of you by God, again, for the sake of order. Okay? All right. Submission, again, is a positive thing. Things that are aligned properly run better. When your, when your car you know, starts getting shaky, you go to get an alignment to put things in order. Maybe the car's pulling too much to one side, and you need to line it out. The same way it is, the Bible is trying to help you in your marriage to get things aligned so that your marriage might run smoothly. All right? We're going to get to the husband, women, so just hold on. I'm, I'm looking at women's faces. They don't. But we're going we're gonna to teach that Oprah out of you. All right? Listen, submission operates on pure faith, all right? First of all, it's required of you by God, and it's written in the Bible. Here it is. So it's required of you by God. And you must put your faith in God's word to trust that if I submit in a godly way, I'm going to get godly blessings, godly results, amen? Plus, it's also putting your faith in the husband. Why? Because when you got married, you, you, you said some vows. You know, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in hell, till death we do depart, forsaking all others and cleaving to thee only. And to what the vows say? Yes. Now, I know we got all modernized. We want to say our own vows. And they're never vows. They're always just sentiments. Right. Ain't promising to do nothing. Right. Their vows sound like, well, the day I met you, I fell in love. You were my knight in shining armor. You were the apple of my eye. My heart skipped a beat. And I'll forever love you. No commitment nowhere. No promise to submit. No promise to obey. No promise to take care. Nothing. Just sentiments. You can't keep a relationship together on sentiments. There must be vows that are spoken, and you need to stick to your vows. It's a promise before a company of believers and before God. You need to be a promise keeper. You hear me, husbands? All right. Give your wife something to submit to. Amen. Listen, ladies, if he's abusive, when you're dating him, don't marry him. He ain't going to change. If he's stingy when he's dating, uh-oh, he ain't a good provider. Y'all listening to me? If he won't work while you're dating, all he does play video games, it's not going to stop. And you can't change him. Amen? To this day, since the cops, they never paid nothing for me. Even when I was dating other women, I took care of her. Amen. And guess what? We had our first child out of wedlock. Amen. He was the praise and worship leader today. That's my son. For those that are visitors. Had him out of wedlock. 
but she never had to take me to court. Told my cousin, said, if he ever gets saved, he'll make somebody a good husband. Why? Because if you're a player and taking care of all my bills, what you going to do when you get saved? See, the foundation was laid because my father told me, he said, listen, you bring in, you know, this boy into the world. He said, when you bring kids into the world, you need to take care of what you bring into this world. He said, you can be the biggest dope dealer, biggest crackhead, biggest sinner in the world. I'm always going to love you because I'm your father. He said, but if you don't take care of the kids you bring into this world, I'll never respect you as a man. And I wanted my father's respect. So I had to man up, saint or sinner, you take care of that child. Amen. Amen. Yep. Don't think you're greater than God. Because these knuckleheads that won't take care of their kids think they're greater than God. So, well, how was that? Listen, Jesus was not Joseph's son. That was Mary's son. That was the work of the Holy Ghost. That was God's only begotten son. So what he did, what God did was send silver, gold, frankincense, and mirth by way of the wise man. That was God's child support to take care and raise his son. See, some of y'all missed that. They brought silver and gold to the child. It was in the hands of Joseph. God's child support for his only begotten son. Amen. Yep. If you're the kind of man when you're dating that takes care of the woman, that pays for every meal, that helps her get her car fixed, change her flat tires, you know, pick her up when she's stranded, if you're that type of guy, then guess what? You got husband qualities. Yeah. And she's more likely to submit to that. If you're not abusive, if you're kind-hearted, long-suffering, you get what I'm saying? Say nice stuff to her. Don't call her out of her name. Yo, that's potential good husband material. But above all things, if Christ is the head of your life, oh, that's real good. Oh, that, that's, that's good husband material right there. All right. Now, let's look real quick. You know, I want to just show you something. In Ephesians chapter 5, Let's begin at verse 21. I want to show you the consistency of what the Apostle Paul wrote. All right? Look what it says. Number one, sitting, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And a lot of people apply that to marriage. Well, is she supposed to submit to me? I'm supposed to submit to her. No, that ain't what that means. It's talking about Christians submitting to proper authorities one toward another in the fear of God. That includes your bosses, the police, get your hands up, the judges, the president, the laws of the land, the school teachers, your husband, your parents, any level of authority, submit to that. One toward another. It's supposed to be all through our society. Submitting to authority. And once again, submission is for the sake of order. Look what it goes on to say. Wives, see right there. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as unto the Lord. Saying the same thing in, in Colossians. Keep going, because it's going to flow the same way. For the husband is the head of the wife, even Christ is the head, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Stay right there. All right? Whatever baggage she had from other relationships, you're supposed to be the Savior. Deliver her from all the, the abuse, the molestation, the persecution, the hatred, the brokenness, the sorrows, the deceit, the lies that maybe somebody else told her. You're supposed to deliver her from that. Supposed to be like Christ in her life. That don't mean you save her soul. It means her body. Not her soul, not her spirit, the body. What's ever going on with her physically, emotionally? Rescue her from that. Let her be comfortable with you, feel safe with you. She'll submit to that. Let her know that I'll, I'll sacrifice myself to provide for you. 
She'll submit to that. Let, let her know that you are third. She'll submit to that. God is first. My wife and family are second. And I am third. She'll submit to that. Knowing that you're going to honor God first in all your decisions. Consider her second. And then you get yours. Because the wife is the glory of the husband. And you're supposed to do all you can to present to yourself and to others a glorious church, a glorious wife, a beautiful wife. Beautiful inside and out. There's some mean-spirited wives, sometimes because they got a mean-spirited husband. Okay, keep going. Therefore, as the church is subject to, unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in what? In everything, everything that's godly. You got to have discernment. I remember when we had the radio broadcast, the live radio broadcast, Men in Motion, and we had callers calling in. Some atheists, some unbelievers, some believers, some hypocrites, some spirit-filled folks. And we had a sister called in and said, you know, I, I'm having a problem. Why? Because I, I try to be submissive to my, my husband, but, but he, he, he had me do a threesome. And I know I had to do it because I'm submitted to it. Wrong. You're part of the body of Christ. You're the bride of Christ. And your first husband is Christ. When you're part of the church. And you don't have to submit to anything immoral. You never break the commandments of God to please your husband. I don't care if it's his, if it's his birthday. It's Christmas. You don't have to be subject to that. Moreover, you're subject to Christ first. So when it comes to submission, you don't have to submit to anything immoral. Nothing. Now, it's not a sin to cut up credit cards. My wife said it feels like it. <laughs> Look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. When you sacrificially love your wife, she's more comfortable submitting to you. Amen? Let's, let's go back to Colossians chapter 3. Again, why submit yourselves to your own husbands? Because it's fit. It's the proper thing to do. Keeps order in the house. Look at verse uh, 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Now, in Ephesians... It, it, it shows us where the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, right? But if you look here, also in Ephesians, when it comes to the duties of the husband, they say you're the head, but love your wife. It didn't put emphasis on his authority. It put emphasis on love. Because if you exercise authority without love, you can become brutal, hard-hearted, hard to live with, uncompassionate, because you're throwing your authority around but ain't showing no love. Because when you add love to your authority, it ushers in a grace that makes you patient, makes you kind, forgiving, tender. Amen? Considering her above yourself. So you need to learn how to love her. And love can only be measured by your efforts, by your sacrifices. You can't treat her bad and say, well, baby, I love you. She don't, she don't feel it. You got to show it. You got you to say it. You know, you, you got to have a love budget as far as I'm concerned. You got to have a beauty budget and a love budget. The beauty budget is that so she can look good for you. The love budget is for buying them roses at nine and then. Hey Amen. Sometimes it's to buy rubber gloves. Hey Amen. Every now and then. What's the rubber gloves for? To wash dishes. 
change diapers. To help around the, listen, clean up around the house is not women's work. It's housework. You live in the house? Especially when she got a nine to five. You got to pitch in. You help yourself. Let me tell you why. Because if she has to work a nine to five, then come home and cook and clean, tend to the baby, wash clothes. Guess what? At the end of the night, she's tired. You are rested and excited. And she's worn out. Y'all get my drift? Help yourself. I used to get home before Sister Cobb and pick the kids up. Dinner's ready, house is clean, clothes are washing. She come on and look around. Woo, I ain't got to do nothing. Yeah. Like the Beverly Hillbillies, take your shoes off. Y'all come back. Okay. <laughs> Listen, let me, let me show you something real quick. Stay, we're going to come back to Colossians 3.19. But let me show you something real quick. Let, let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Look at this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be what? Equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Listen, sisters. And took upon himself uh, the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he did what? Humbled himself. It takes humility to submit to somebody. Humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, if Jesus Christ thought it not robbery or wrong to call himself equal with God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but nevertheless submitted himself as a servant to do the will of the God, do the will of, of God or the God he was equal to, the father that he was equal to, but became a servant, became just like man. And he didn't feel slighted when he went from deity to humanity. So sister, you shouldn't feel slighted when you humble yourself up under a good God-fearing husband. Kind of hard to do if he's wicked, if he's mean, if he ain't God-fearing. But when he's God-fearing and giving you sacrificial love, putting you before himself, and doing it all in obedience to God, you should not be afraid to humble yourself. It doesn't mean you less than, you're still equal to, but you're taking a position like Christ did to serve. Amen? All right. Look at John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. We'll be satisfied. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen who? The Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Again, he humbled himself as a servant. He said, if you see me, you've seen God. You've seen the Father. But yet still humbled himself and became a servant. Went to the cross to die for the sins of the world. And the scripture said, he said, no man take my life, I lay it down for myself. Nobody going to make you submit, you do it willingly. But again, brother, you got to give her something to humble herself and submit herself to. Amen? Can't be all macho. Got to be masculine, but not, don't be macho. Because macho men are not teachable. Macho men are not flexible. Be masculine, but not macho. Now, it's good to have an ego, and guess what, sisters? Your, your submission strokes his ego. Come on, brothers, think about it. A wife that'll submit to you, be good to you, faithful to you, 
You, you do extra stuff for her. Yes, sir. When she stroke your ego, especially. When she become your cheerleader. I'll never forget the day that, that we moved to the house that we about to move out of. And the garbage disposal went out. Now, I ain't never fixed one before. So I read a little manual and stuff, went and got me a garbage disposal. I fixed that thing. And it worked. <laughs> Had my little tool belt on. And she called my mother-in-law and said, Mama, listen to this. She said, what am I listening to? She said, my husband just put in a brand new garbage disposal. I'm so proud of him. Boy, my chest went out like a bird. I'm like, I took my screwdriver out of my belt and started going around tightening hinges on the kitchen cabinet. She stroked my ego. I want to do some more. <laughs> I'm just saying. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 3. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Be not bitter against them, huh? What's this bitterness that Paul is talking about? Sometimes the responsibilities of marriage can cause some men to become resentful or embittered against their wives. How many wives have seen over the years your husband start getting a little grouchy? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all remember when you first started dating? You know, I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of this. You know, you open the door. Hey, baby. Close the door and go around the side. You get a little skip, you know, get in the car and close it. After we got married over years, it changed. You go over there and say, girl, you better get in so we can go. Got a little crusty. Like his life happens. You know? One of my pet peeves, my wife's always late, and I like to be early. So it'd be a little stressful sometimes coming to church. She could preach to <laughs> on the ethics of being on time every other Sunday. She got one this morning. Okay? But I still love her. With a little crust on the love every now and then. Don't pretend like you ain't did it too. Every now and then. Okay, you ain't, okay, I'm just saying. But what are some of the situations and responsibilities of marriage that can make a husband resentful and bitter toward his wife? Now, I'm going to give you a few. Give you about 12 or so. And, and if that's you, don't move. And sister, if that's him, don't move. Don't be cutting your eyes. Trying to let me know. That's him. Don't do that. Everybody look straight ahead. If you agree, you can say amen. But don't, don't, don't acknowledge nothing. Okay? Number one, a husband can become a little bitter toward his wife. And sometimes it's, it's mild bitterness. and sometimes it's extreme. Okay? But here's some of the reasons. A lack of submission from the wife. A wife that's always contending. The Bible said it's better for a man to dwell on the house or the roof, the roof of the house over in the corner than to live in a house with a contentious woman. A woman that's always contending with him. He can't do nothing right. I was double checking, micromanaging. Somebody said, well, I told you don't do that now. Well, I guess I did. And I said, don't look. Don't cut your eyes. But he didn't say nothing about saying, saying, well. So I'm telling you now, don't even say nothing. Don't say, well, don't do that. You can say amen. But don't say it with, with accent. Amen. You know how it is. Yeah, that's him. Don't do it like you say, amen, amen. Number two, the frustration of raising children because of the loss of spontaneous freedoms. Before you had kids, let's go to the movie. Boom, let's go. Now you got to find a babysitter. 
or you got to find a movie where you can take the children. You can't, you can't play Tarzan and Jane no more. <laughs> got, got to put the bathrobe on. Y'all know what I'm saying. You lose some spontaneity, and, and he might get a little frustrated. All right? Here's something that goes along with it. Diminish the t tension from the wife because of attention given to the children. I've seen husbands get envious of all the attention the baby's getting. But she has to give that attention to the baby. So you got to wait. When baby needs, the baby can't wait. You're a grown man. Wait. Amen. Amen. Mature people know how to wait. When Christopher is little, he's bang on the little, little tray. I want to eat. I want to eat. You want to eat? Grandmother say, have patience, little one. Have patience. I want to eat. He a child. He don't know nothing about no patience. But we can wait on our food. We grown. Food will be ready in about 45 minutes. Okay, I'm going to go down and watch the game until then. You mature. But sometimes they get frustrated. So, so try to get some rest somewhere because your husband needs some tenderness too. Men need tenderness too. Ain't nothing, wrong, ain't nothing wrong with telling them, wait. But, but give them a time. How long? How long? You got to tell him something. Because he'll, he'll lose it. Amen? If my son got married on his wedding day, him and my daughter-in-law have waited, you know, three and a half years this day. Didn't touch each other. Amen? Come the wedding day, this is it. The mother-in-laws, you know, rented a, a, a limo as a surprise. He didn't know what was coming. So after he did, had the reception, took all the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little cake and a drink. Yeah, okay, it's over. Time to go. Right. Been waiting three and a half years. No, wait. Let's take pictures. No, I don't want to take no more pictures. No, no, I don't want to do that. No, no. No, no. What's wrong with y'all? He started going around. He's flipping out. Oh, this, oh, this deal with it. Y'all better tell this boy what's going on. Oh, no, spoil the secret. He's going to kill somebody. <laughs> so I had to tell him what was going on. Listen, your mother-in-law's got rented a limo. It'll be here in about another 10 minutes, man. He said, why did somebody say so, man? I said, they were trying to surprise you. Oh, my God. I said, you ready to tear some stuff up? Yeah, I thought they had lost their mind. <laughs> he about to lose his mind. Three and a half years, long time. All right. He was thinking, this is the day the Lord has made. Y'all better let me out of here. <laughs> Number four, stay with me now. <laughs> Number four, changes in the wife's appearance due to age or illness. Sometimes the wife don't look as slim and beautiful and cute as she used to. But brother, you, you're not supposed to love her because of her cuteness. Because some of your cute done wore off too. Amen? I used to have hair full of hair. Flat top. Put hand in Jericho one time. One time I had a finger wave on the side and the back and Jericho on the top. 29 inch waist, leather pants, leather jacket. I sparkled and jingle. I sang in bands and traveled around. All I had was show clothes. She didn't marry this. She got stuck with this. You know, she's a little skinny thing, too. You know, I don't know how she really feels about me, but I love her just the same. Amen? I knocked down a brick wall for Christina. Because when I say it for better, for worse, for rich, for poor, I meant it. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Okay, number five. Number five. A lack of domestic skills in his wife. All right, sisters? You need to have some domestic skills. You need to know how to cook. 
something. <laughs> Amen. My wife, you know, didn't have a bunch of cooking skills. She said, don't do it. I'm doing it. She didn't have a bunch of cooking skills. Our, our family meals consisted of hot dogs, hamburgers, spaghetti, tuna casserole. And on special days, she made meatloaf. She could make some meatloaf. Amen. Any other meal outside that, I had to cook it. Amen. My wife don't know how to sew. You get a hole in your sock, you bring it to daddy. You need a hem in your pants, you bring it to me. I don't mind. I didn't, I didn't marry her for her domestic skills, but that might frustrate some guys. I know how to clean up the house. Amen? Especially if you were a stay-at-home mom. Had the house clean. Had the food cooked. Had the clothes washed. He going out working for you, stay at home and work for him and the kids. Amen? You can frustrate your husband. If, if the house ain't never cleaned up, he got a right to be angry. He got the right to fuss a little bit. Amen? Because the house should be clean, and so should you. Don't look the same as you did when he left to go to work, unless you get up getting dressed. See, I ain't saying can't, can't, can't get a bit of hell. Boy, open and jack y'all up. No, no, no. You do it for your man. You don't know what he takes when he goes out on that job for you and the kids. House ought to be in order. You want the bills paid, don't you? You want your hair done. I'm talking to stay-at-home moms. You want to do all that sacrificial stuff. What are you doing sacrificially to show that you love him back? I'm just saying, see, and... and Y'all better wake up. You need some domestic skills. That's what my mother did with my sisters. That's what she did with her boys. That's how I know how to sew. She had nine kids. Can you see her having to sew him nine pants? You're going to learn how to hem your own. You're going to learn, learn, learn how to sew your own buttons on. So you won't have to depend. So this is what she said. So when you get out of here as a single man, you won't have to depend on no woman. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why I taught Sister Collins. You know, we, we started dating. I was 17. She was 15. And I taught Sister Collins, you need to work a job. Because I was working. I'm working steady ever since I was 14 years old. Left home when I was 16. Paid my own way. And I taught her how to be independent so that she wouldn't have to depend on me or any other man if she had to be by herself. When she left her grandmother's house, she had her own townhouse, moved to another townhouse, had her own car, paid her own payments until she was off on pregnancy leave. Then I paid all her bills. Amen. So give me all your stuff. We had broken up during that process. Still, give me all your bills. Why? Because you got my son. I want you to have to rush back to work if you don't have to. I worked three jobs, a full-time and two part-time jobs. And we weren't even together at that time. I did it because I still loved her. I kept breaking over because I didn't like the fact that she smoked cigarettes. I know you're laughing. That's a stupid reason breaking with somebody. It's not? Okay, okay, all right. Well, see, I told you. I told you. Okay. Sister Cobb's over here talking to me. You just use that as an excuse to get out and do your thing. Well, maybe. <laughs> See, if you had been smoking, I wouldn't have an excuse. See, it's still your fault. <laughs> okay, number six. Envious of her success in business or favor with other people. I've known husbands be envious of their own wives, and they get bitter against them. Who do you think you are? And, 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 then, and then when they make more money, they get intimidated. There's a time Sister Cobbs made more money than I did. But she always submitted, even financially. Amen? Because she trusted who I was. She trusted how I handled money. Amen? Don't be envious of your wife. Celebrate your wife's success. Amen. Celebrate it. She keeping it all in the family. 
Now, I can understand if she talked about this is my money, my house, my car. No, this is ours. We're a team. Because some women that get that money say, well, mine is mine and what's yours is mine. But don't get envious. Celebrate her. Amen. Amen. And, and sister, if you make more money, stay submissive. Amen. Number seven, being dis discontent with his wife when he compares his wife to another woman or to one of his exes. <laughs> Listen, she ain't going to never submit if you do that. That's a slap in the face. That's a slap in the face. You start doing that, then she's going to say, well, you should have married her. Matter of fact, you can take yourself and get out right now and go get her. My father used to say this all the time. He said, my wife is the prettiest woman I know, the smartest woman I know, most intelligent woman I know, the kindest woman that I know, the sexiest woman I know. Why? Because she's the only woman I know. He said, when it comes to my wife, I have tunnel vision. All I see is her, not everybody else. Stay focused on your own. The Bible said drink from your own sister. You know, stay with the wife of your youth. Okay. Number eight, feelings of being taken for granted or being underappreciated. Make sure you appreciate your husband if he's a good man. And show your appreciation. Just don't say it. Show it. Once again, love can only be proven by efforts and sacrifices. You love her, show it. You love him, show it. If they do well, celebrate them. Amen? Make a big deal out of your husband. If he's a good one, make, make a big deal out of it. I mean, when it comes to celebration, boy, how come, Mother's Day is a big day. Father's Day, eh. Ain't no big celebration for Father's Day. It's Mother's Day. But we got it backwards. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. I always put father first, then your mother. In Eastern religions and stuff like that, in the old biblical days, the wedding wasn't about the bride. It was about the groom. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the groom. He's the head. He's the first. He's the one going to make all the sacrifices. He's the protector. He's the, he's the savior. He's the provider. It was about him. Remember, the, remember the, the scripture, the parable about the ten virgins with the lamps? Five had oil and five didn't. What was it waiting on? It was waiting on the bridegroom. It wasn't waiting on the bride. But in our ceremonies, we wait for the bride to come through the door. No, it's supposed to be the groom coming through the door. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. When we get to heaven, we ain't going to celebrate the church. The church is going to celebrate the bridegroom, Jesus. Okay, all right. Here's one. Listen up, husbands. Feeling disrespected when, in fact, you are just over-demanding. You can't get frustrated with your wife, when you demand too much out of her, when you wear her out with your ways, with your self-centeredness, you can't do that. Again, if you live by the mantra, God is first, I am second. I mean, she is second, and I am third, you'll never do that. Okay. They're not liking this last part, Lord. Sometimes husbands get, get, get frustrated, embittered, and it's all because of feelings and actions of insecurity. Wow. You don't trust your wife, so you watch her like a hawk. Got a strong love. Oh, I love her, I love her, yeah, but your love is so strong it chokes her. Because ain't no, ain't no trust in that type of love. You need to have a love that's strong, but not the choking kind. 
Let her go to work without you calling her all day. Where you at? Where you doing? Who's there? Let her go shopping without you having to tag along. Let her go with her girlfriends. You trust your wife, then let her go. Because if she's going to fool around on you, she's going to find a way. My father put it like this here. This is the only way to really trust somebody is just to trust somebody. That's just it. You ought to know who you're married to. And I ought to be able to trust you. That goes for husband and wives. My father, oh, I'm going to quote my father a lot, but my father had a long marriage until he passed away. And mom's still living off his love. Mom was in her early 60s when dad passed away. I said, Mom, you still look good. Had a little jean outfit on and everything. Cut her hair, you know, a little, little afro. Had her earrings on and her high heel boots. She loved her high heels. I said, Mom, you served daddy well. You faithful, he's faithful to you and so on and so forth. Because a lot of pastors that have been, uh, with wives that passed away, was asking her out to lunch, dinner, breakfast. I said, you served dad well. I said, I don't know how my other brothers and sisters feel. I said, but you free to date. Go ahead, go ahead, date. You know, if you want to remarry, go on and get remarried. I'm with you. She said, boy, after your father, who? And I realized then his love was legendary. She was married to a legend. Oh, the world didn't know him, but his love was still legendary. That's why Coretta Scott King never got remarried. He's married to a legend. Now, I ain't going to get into his little issues, but, but politically and socially, he was a legend. <laughs> Marriage-wise, he was a whoremonger. I'm sorry. Martin Luther than everybody else. That's what he okay, But I respect what he did socially and politically. You know. Okay, anyway. Number 11, financial problems in the household. Money problems can frustrate the whole house. Money problems can frustrate the whole house. That's why if your husband don't make that much money, stop spending. If your husband ain't making that much money, stop spending so much money. And all the sisters said, yeah. you didn't hear a lot over here. I was looking that way. Amen. Maybe I had to look over here. And all the sisters said, Okay, that's a little bit better. There must be a lot of single folk over here. Okay. So the bride said, that's right. I'm saying I ain't saying amen. I can spend what I want to spend. Anybody can tell me nothing. Okay. Well, just, just file this away just in case you get another. Just file it away. All right. All right. Okay, there you go. She got notes. Amen. Number 12, sometimes he's embittered because he's unwilling to forgive her for her mistakes. Unforgiveness is the seed of bitterness, the seed of resentment. So if your wife had made some mistakes, you know, then learn to forgive her. Hey, man, we said, well, my wife was unfaithful. Okay. The Bible said you can get a biblical divorce and be free to marry somebody else. But as Christians, the first attempt at reconciling, even when there's infidelity, is try to forgive it. That don't mean you got to just come back together, you know. But, but if you still love, listen, my mother said like this here, said, if you can't stand to see them with nobody else, you need to wait and keep working on it. 
But when you get to the point where you don't care if they're with somebody else because you've been injured that bad, she said, maybe that's the time. Amen. And that goes for the wife to the husband. You know, you can become embittered if you don't forgive him. It goes both ways. Well, I'm just giving you a few, you know, things that where a man might be embittered. You know, well, unloving to his wife. Husbands should always love their wives with an affectionate love, sympathetic love, a selfless love, a self-sacrificing love. And you should always seek the best for your wife. Sometimes, even in love, you got to take your feelings out of the equation. Uh Uh-oh. Because love is an action. See, the world would tell you it's just an emotion. You know? Even Tina Turner said, what love got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? No, no, no. That's the worldly way of looking at it. Biblically. Love is the effort you put towards somebody for their good. That's why the Bible says we are to, we're supposed to have so much love, agape love, that we love our enemies. That's agape love. But the marriage relationship should have all four loves. Agape is what keeps you together. Agape is the unselfish love that only comes from God. The world does not know agape. They know the rest of them, but they don't know agape. Agape love comes from God. It doesn't seek its own. It'll keep on loving, seeking nothing in return. If you never love them back, they keep loving you with agape. It is agape that will hold your marriage together. It's agape that says, I turn the other cheek. It's agape that says, I don't give railing for railing. It's agape that says, I don't get in competition with my spouse. Amen? Your spouse should hold a position in your life. Amen? A lot of people calling people their wives, their husbands, their spouses, and it's only a nickname. Amen? It's only a nickname. A nickname is something somebody calls you, but you're not really that. You call her your wife, but you treat it like it's a nickname. You call her your wife, but you don't treat her like a wife. The Bible said, when a man finds a wife, you find a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. See, many men have found a woman, but she wasn't a wife. Every wife is a woman, but every woman ain't made to be nobody's wife. Treat her right, because God gave her to you. God ordained this. Your wifey, your wife, your W-I-F-E is a woman in full excellence. And you need to treat her in an excellent way, brother. And love your wife. Don't be bitter against them. And love them like Christ loved the church. Appreciate your husband, especially when he sacrificially loves you. Celebrate your husband and have the kids celebrate him too. Don't get in a war against your husband and gather your children together to talk about your husband. Don't you ever paint your husband, the kid's father, I don't care if they stepfather, real father, don't ever paint him in a bad light. And brother, don't ever put yourself in a bad light. Amen? Don't provoke your kids to anger. Don't be overly hard. Don't be overly strict. Remember how you were when you were young. <laughs> Remember that? Sometimes parents forget. And they be so strict. And children rebel. Sometimes we rebel even when you ain't strict. Because the way I preach is the way I do things. A lot of people think I'm strict on my kids. I'm not. As it comes, it's hard. All my nephews need to. Uncle Lee's a mean uncle. Everybody know it. They argue with my boys. My father's not mean. Yeah, he is. Don't you just love it? When folk talk about you, don't even know you. 
My kids live with me. My dad's not mean. Yeah, he is. Everybody knows Uncle Lee's mean. That's my middle name, y'all. So my son Christopher said, okay, Ryan, dad mean? He said, no, nah, dad just got standards. So they went to the most rebellious kid, Matthew. Now, your dad's mean name. He said, no, what? So finally, Christopher said, look across the street. What do you see? I see a Ford Escort. He said, my mean daddy bought me that car. What'd your daddy buy you? See, sometimes people think you mean when you set standards. Listen, parent, parents, your child needs for you to set standards. And they need for you to stick to them. Sit down with your wife, talk it out, see what's a proper curfew. Once you're there, 8 30. Well, the game don't start till 7 30. You can't do Come on, you can't do that to your child. Raise them right, then you got to let them go a little bit let, and trust them. Don't give them too much freedom, but give them enough so they can enjoy life and can, and can grow up a little bit. Sit down, talk to your wife, talk to your husband, work that out. I grew up a little bit stricter than my wife did. We had to, we had to talk some stuff out. You get what I'm saying? You're a team, work together. Don't make no financial decisions by yourself. Talk to your mate. I don't care if you're the only one working. She's still, you know, it's equal. And half that money you're making is hers. It ain't never been my money and her money. I don't understand couples that say, well, I pay the mortgage, she pays the utilities. If she don't pay them, they ain't going to cut them off on her side of the house. <laughs> Everything is going off. And it's hard to, see, sin costs money. And it's hard to have an affair when your spouse knows every dime that's spent. But it's just the Holiday Inn. Abba, Abba, Abba. No. It holds you to accountability. One checkbook, one account, one savings account with both your names on it. No secrets. No secret passwords on your laptop. No secret passwords on your phone. One time since the cop's phone wasn't working, I said, take mine. Your husband lets you take his phone all day. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to hide. Like my father told me when I got married, he said, when you get married, he said, son, always live like you're supposed to live. Do what you're supposed to do. Go where you're supposed to go. Be with who you're supposed to be with. Say what you're both supposed to say. Go home when you're supposed to be home. If you do that, when your wife asks you, you can say what you're supposed to say. Amen. You won't have to hide behind nothing. Amen. She'll call and find out you was exactly where you said you were. She'll drive up on you right there where you said you were with who you're supposed to be with. That's how you live. That's how you build up trust. That's how you help her to submit. That's how you keep him from being insecure. When we first got married, I knew she married me on faith. Because every morning she'd go to work, I was working in the evenings, she'd check my wallet, go through my wallet. You know, I'd be sitting, she, 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 for years she didn't know I was doing that. You know how you fake sleep, got your eyes like this here, but you can see. She'd go on through Yeah, go on through. You ain't going to find nothing. She wouldn't find nothing. Nothing. Then I would get up, get my wallet, and wouldn't find nothing. <laughs> but I learned. I ain't trip. I ain't trip. I start, I start putting it in my budget. I have a little drawer. I keep cash in. That's for her to peel off of. Otherwise, she's going to go through my wallet. I still ain't trying to hide nothing, but I knew what she, okay. First, I think she was looking for numbers. You know, she was looking for, she was looking for numbers. After that, she was looking for numbers. So I, I had a budget for her, still do to this day. I don't need cash. If I got a full tank of gas, food at home, you know, I got my debit card in my wallet. That's all I need. For some reason, she need debit card, credit card, and cash. <laughs> Amen? All right. So, husband, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands. We'll deal with the children next Sunday, okay? That's all I got to say. Come on, stand on your feet if you will.